Hey, Mike. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Hello and welcome back to another Nugget of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. And that'll just be our little secret. You know, as always, I appreciate the likes, shares, subscribes, comments, any of it. Good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, wow, man. One of my favorite artists of the Baroque era is Artemisia Gentileschi. She's an artist who is underappreciated and underrecognized for her skills and her artwork, in my opinion. And so today I want to look at some of her works. In, sp in particular, I'd like to look at her series on Judith and Holofernes and how she came to start creating these works. Not long after being trained by her father in his studio, several of the other male apprentices were very aggressively harassing her. This is some kind of joke, right? One of the artists that was very attracted to her was Agostino Tassi. He raped her in 1612, when she was 19 years old. Self-conscious about this, Artemisia agreed to marry her aggressor and continued with the physical relationship. When her father found out about the situation, he was extremely upset, especially since Tassi had no intentions of actually following through with a marriage. Oh, you dirty son of a bitch! Her father would sue Tassi for injury and damages. Now this would develop into a seven-month-long rape trial. According to court testimony, Tassi had tried to get her alone several times before actually trapping her in her own bedroom. In order to prove the allegations, Artemisia underwent a vaginal examination in front of the full open to the public courtroom to see if her claims were actually true. What? What? <laughs> Defending himself, Tassi said that he was teaching the untalented girl perspective that day in question, and he never had any physical contact with her. Several witnesses came forward to claim that she had been far from innocent in the whole situation. But other witnesses came forward against Tassi, saying that he had bragged about the incident. It is also important to note that he was put into prison for raping his sister-in-law and then hiring a hitman to kill his wife. I don't like bullies. In the end, Tassi was convicted of rape. He was banished from Rome. But within four months, he was back at the Genileschi studio, at her father's invitation. You know, what do I know? I color for a living, but I know that that's not, that's not right. Toward the end of this trial, Artemisia began painting Judith slaying Holofernes, another biblical story, this time of Judith, a Jewish widow that perfectly fit into the mindset of Artemisia's work and situation at this particular time. Judith's city was being attacked by the Middle Eastern Emperor Nebuchadnezzar. His army was pushing the region because they had refused to help him fight in a war with the Medes. After the war was won, Nebuchadnezzar's commander, Holofernes, was in charge of dealing the punishment. He would order the city's water supply to be completely cut off, and after 34 days, the people were suffering. Judith had a plan. She and her maid took wine, oil, and food to the tent of Holofernes. She captivated him with her beauty. She visited for three nights to gain his trust. And on the fourth night, the day before the city was going to give up to the army, she was invited to a party at the camp. Holofernes got drunk, and after he passed out, Judith would cut off his head with his own sword. She would smuggle his head out of the camp in a food bag. His head was then hung on the city wall. The leaderless soldiers would then abandon their post and go on back, leaving the city. But here, the woman took control of the situation, used her mind to take advantage, and brought down the mighty Holofernes in a single motion of mind and body. The perceived weak and smart always defeat the tough and stupid. 
My brain is the size of a rat turd. Again, Artemisia would approach this very differently from her male counterparts. In her version, Judith is pulling the head of Holofernes as she cuts through his throat. She would again revisit the same subject matter in 1620, a slightly more brutal version with blood shooting out of Holofernes' neck like a fountain. Artemisia also gives the wardrobe a little bit of a tweak, as well as a slightly bigger sword this time around. I'm proud of it, people! I tell you what, I love that series. I'm so sorry for that. Really, apologize. Apology accepted. No problem.